The cloud is evolving. You know, it's no longer just a set of remote services accessed through a public cloud. Rather, it's expanding to on-premises, to multiple premises across clouds, and eventually out to the edge. The challenge for customers is how to treat these locations as one. The opportunity for technology companies is to make that as simple as possible from an operational perspective. Welcome to this CUBE program, where we're featuring Pure Storage in its latest innovations in bringing infrastructure and applications more closely together, fusing them, if you will. And today, we have a two-part program. First, we're going to hear from Rob Lee, who's the CTO of Pure Storage, and then my colleague, John Walls, is going to talk to Scott Sinclair of Enterprise Strategy Group. Scott will provide his expert analysis on infrastructure modernization and what to expect in today's changing world. So joining me right now is Rob Lee, CTO of Pure Storage. Welcome, Rob, good to see you. Good to see you again too, Dave. Hey, so take us through the announcements from today at a high level. What's most exciting about what you're delivering? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, as you know, uh, many announcements today, many things uh, to discuss, but overall, uh, you know, I think what's most exciting is it's the expansion of our ability to help customers uh, along the modern data journey, right? Uh, we've always thought of uh, the journey to modern data as being uh, formed by, by three pillars, if you will, uh, certainly modernizing infrastructure, modernizing operations uh, and applications. Uh, and today's announcements are really, uh, you know, in that, in that kind of middle category of, like you said, bringing infrastructures and applications applications a lot more closely together, right? Uh, we've been modernizing infrastructure since day one, probably uh, people best uh, know us for that. Uh, and today's announcements are really about um, uh, tackling that operations piece, bringing infrastructure uh, and code and applications cl more closely together. And so when we think about um, pure fusion, for example, um, you know, that that's really uh, a huge step forward in how we're enabling our customers uh, to manage uh, large fleets of infrastructure uh, uh, products and components uh, to deliver those services in a more automated, more uh, tightly integrated, seamlessly, transparently delivered way to the application that they serve, whether these uh, services are being delivered by many different arrays in one location, many different arrays in, in different data center locations, or, or between the premise, uh, you know, on-premise environment and the cloud environment. Um, likewise, uh, in the application front, um, you know, when we think about today's announcements uh, uh, in, in Portworx uh, data services, that's really all about how do we um, make the run and operate uh, steps of a lot of the application building blocks that cloud native developers are using and relying on the database applications that are most popular in open source, Cassandra, Mongo, uh, so on and so forth. How do we make uh, the run and operate pieces of those applications a lot more intuitive, a lot more easily deployed, scaled, managed, monitored for those app developers? And so a ton of um, a ton of momentum is a big step forward uh, on that front. And then you know, right in the middle, uh, when we think about today's announcements in Pure One, um, that's really all about how do we uh, create more visibility, connecting the um, you know, monitoring and management of the infrastructure running the apps and bring those closer together. So when we think about um, you know, the visibility we're now uh, able to deliver for Portworx uh, topologies, uh, allowing developers and DevOps teams to look at the entire uh, uh, tech stack, if you will, of a container environment from the application to the containers, to the Kubernetes cluster, uh, to the compute nodes, all the way down to the storage, and be able to see everything that's going on, root cause any sort of problems that come up. But again, that's all in service of bringing infrastructure and applications a lot more closely together. Um, so that's really how I view it. Uh, and, and like I said, it's really uh, the next step in our journey of, of helping customers modernize uh, between infrastructure operations and, and their applications. Okay, so, so you've got the, the control plane piece, which is all about the operating model. Uh, you've got Pure One, you mentioned that, which is for monitoring. You've got the Portworks piece, which brings sort of development and deployment together and in both infrastructure as a code, as code and bit better understanding that full stack of, like you say, from applications through the clusters, the containers, all the way down to the storage. So it's, I feel like it's not even storage anymore. I mean, it's, it's cloud. <laughs> it, it, it is, and, and you know, I, I chuckle a little bit because uh, you know, at the end of the day, we deliver storage, but what customers are looking for is, uh, and what they value and what they care about is their data. Now, obviously the storage is in service of the data. Um, uh, what, we're, what we're doing with today's announcements is, uh, again, just making it, uh, extending 
extending our reach, helping customers work with our data, uh, you know, a couple more steps down the road beyond just serving the bits and bytes of the storage, but now getting into how do we connect uh, the data that's sitting on our storage more quickly, uh, get it, you know, in the hands of developers and the applications more seamlessly and more fluidly across these different environments. How does this news fit into Pure's uh, evolution as a company? I mean, I don't see it as a pivot. Uh, because the pivot's like, okay, we're, we're going to go from here. And yeah, now we were, we're doing, doing this, this, now we're doing that. Right. Yeah. And so it's, 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 it's more like a reinvention or a progression uh, of the vision and the strategy. Can you talk to that? Absolutely. Um, you know, and I think between those two words, I would say it's a progression. It's a next step in the journey as opposed to a reinvention, right? Uh, you know, and again, I go back to, um, you know, I go back to uh, the difference between storage and data and how customers are using data. Uh, we've been on on a long, uh, long-term path, long-term journey to continue to help customers modernize uh, how they work with data, the results they're able to drive from the data. Uh, we got our starting infrastructure, um, and and just um, uh, you know, if you want to do if you want to do bleeding edge things with data, you're not going to do it on decades old uh, infrastructure. So let's fix that component first. That's how we got our start. Um, you know, today's announcements are really the next couple of steps along that journey. Um, how do we make how do we make the core infrastructure more easily uh, delivered, more flexible to operate, more automated uh, in the hands of uh, not just the DevOps teams, the IT teams, but the application developers? How do we how do we deliver infrastructure more seamlessly as code? Well, why why is that important? Um, it's important because. What customers are looking for uh, out of their data is uh, both speeds and feeds, the traditional kind of measures, bandwidth, IOPS, latency, that sort of thing. But they're looking for a speed of agility, right? You look at the modern application space uh, around how data is being processed. It's a very, very fast moving uh, application space. Uh, you know, the databases that are being used today may be different than the ones using, you know, being used three months from now or six months from now. And so um, developers, application teams are looking for, uh, you know, a ton more flexibility, a ton more agility uh, than they were three, five, 10, 15 years ago. Um, the other aspect is simplicity and reliability, right? As you know, um, that's a, key, a core component of, uh, you know, of everything we do. Uh, our core products, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know our, our arrays, our storage appliances, um, you know, we're, we're very well known for the simplicity uh, and reliability we drive at the individual uh, product level. Well, as we scale and look at, um, you know, larger environments, as we look at uh, customers' expectations uh, for what they expect from a cloud-like service, there's the next level of scale and how we deliver that simplicity and reliability, right? And what do I mean by that? Well, a large enterprise customer uh, who wants to operate like a cloud, wants to be able to manage large fleets of um, uh, infrastructure resources, be able to package them up, deliver uh, infrastructure services to their internal customers. Want to, want, they want to be able to do it in a self-service, policy-driven, easy to control, easy to manage way. Um, and, and that's the next level of fleet level simplicity. And that's really what, what Pure Fusion uh, is about, right? It is, is allowing uh, operators that control plane to uh, specify those, um, those attributes and how that service should be delivered. Um, same thing with Portworks, right? If we think about simplicity and reliability, uh, containers, cloud native applications, microservices, a lot of benefits there, right? Very fast moving space. You can mix and match components, put them together very easily. Um, but what goes hand in hand with that is now a need for a greater degree of simplicity because you have more moving parts and a greater need for reliability because, well, now you're not just serving one application, but you know, 30 or 40 working in unison. And that's really what we're after with, with uh, Portworks and Portworks Data Services and the evolution of that family. So getting back to your original question, um, I really look at today's announcements as not a pivot, not a reinvention, but the next logical steps in our long-term journey to help customers modernize everything they do uh, around data. Right, thanks for that, Rob. Hey, I, I want to switch topics. So virtually every infrastructure player now has an as-a-service offering. And there are lots of claims out there about who was first, who's the best, et cetera. What's Pure's position on this topic? You claim you're ahead of the pack in delivering subscription and, and as a service offerings in the storage industry. You certainly were first with Evergreen. That was sort of a, a, a real change in how folks delivered. 
What about as a service and pure as a service? What gives you confidence that you have the right approach and you're leading the industry in this regard? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I, I mean, I think of, uh, first and foremost, we think of everything we do, uh, you know, at Pure as a service, and whether that's delivering products uh, and helping customers to run and operate uh, in an as a service model internally, uh, or whether it's Pure taking on more of that run and operate uh, as a service ourselves with with Pure as a service. Um, and so, you know, the the second part of your question, which is, uh, you know, what is it that, that sets us apart? What are we doing differently? What gives us confidence that that um, you know this is the right path. Well, you know, fundamentally, I think the difference is uh, obviously this is a, a uh, you know, a, a hotter topic in the industry, um, you know, of late. But I think the difference is uh, between us and the competitive set is we really look at this as a product and technology led uh, philosophy and strategy. And we have since day one. Right. And I think that's different than a lot of others in the industry, um, you know, who look at it as a little bit more of a, you know, uh, a packaging exercise between financial services, professional services, wrap it up in T's and C's and you call it a service. Um, and what do I mean by that? Right. So, you know, if you look internally at Pure, um, everything we do, we think of as a service. We have a business unit organized around it. We have an engineering team, significant resources dedicated to it uh, and building out uh, service offerings. Um, you know, when we think about why this is technology led, uh, you know, I, I think of a service for something to be thought of as a service, right? It's got to be flexible. It's got to be adaptable. Um, I've got to be able to grow as a customer and evolve uh, as I need, uh, whether that's, you know, changing needs in terms of performance and capacity. Um, I've got to be able to do that without being locked uh, into day one rigid kind of static swim lanes of uh, having the capacity plan or plan out what my usage is going to look like uh, 18 months from now. Right. Um, I've got to be able to move and evolve and grow uh, without disruption. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's not it's not a service if you're going to make me uh, do a data migration or take a downtime. Uh, and so when I net all that out, right, uh, what are the things that you need, the attributes you need to be able to deliver a service? Well, uh, you need a product set that is going to be able to be highly malleable, highly flexible, uh, highly evolvable. Um, you need something that's going to be able to cover the entire gamut of, of needs, uh, whether it's price performance, uh, tiers, uh, you know, high performance, capacity, lower cost uh, price points. Um, you need something that's got a rich set of capabilities, whether it's uh, access protocols, file block object, um, whether it's data protection uh, properties, you know, replication, snapshots, um, uh, ransomware protection. Uh, so you need that full uh, suite of capabilities. Um, but in order to deliver this a service and enable uh, me as a customer to seamlessly grow and change, you know, that's got to be delivered on a very tight set of uh, technology that can be uh, repurposed and, and configured in different ways. You can't do this on 17 different products uh, <laughs> and expect me to change and, and, and move uh, every, every single time I have a, a a service need change. And so when I net that out, that puts us in a, a absolutely differentiated position to be able to deliver this because again, everything we do is, is based on, you know, two core product families, Portworx adds a third. We're able to deliver all of the, the major uh, storage protocols, all of the data protection capabilities across all of the price performance uh, and service tiers. And we're able to do this on, on a very tight uh, code base. And, and as you know, uh, everything we do is completely not disruptive. So all of the elements uh, really you know, add up uh, in, in our favor. And, and like I said, this is a, a huge area of a strategic focus for us. So these offerings, they're all part of the service, service driven component uh, of your portfolio. Is that correct? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Um, you talk all the time about modern data experiences, modern applications, modern data, changing the way customers think about infrastructure. What exactly does that mean and, and how are you driving that? Well, I, I think um, I think it, it means a couple different things, but if I were to net it out, it's it's a greater demand for agility, a greater demand for flexibility and, and optionality. Um, and, and if we look at why that is, uh, you know, when I talk to customers, uh, as they think about an infrastructure, largely they think about their existing application demands and needs, what they're spending 90% of their time and budget dealing with today. And then the new stuff that they're getting more and more pressured uh, to go off and build and support, which is oftentimes the more strategic initiatives that they have to serve. So they're kind of balancing both worlds. Um, and in the new world of modern applications, uh, it's much more dynamic. 
um, meaning you know uh, uh, the application sets that are being deployed are changing all the time. Um, the environments uh, and what the infrastructure needs to deliver uh, it has to change more quickly in terms of scaling up, down, growing, uh, has to be a lot more elastic um, and has much higher variance, right? And what I mean by that is um, you know, you look at a, a modern cloud native microservices architecture type application, it's really, you know, 20, 30, 40 different applications, uh, all working in concert with one another under the hood. This is a very different infrastructure demand than your more traditional application set, right? Back in the day, um, you know, you, you have an Oracle application, you go design an, an environment for that, right? It's a big exercise, but once you put it in place, it, it has its own life cycle. Um, these days with modern applications, uh, you know, it's not just one application, it's 20 or 30. You've got to support all of them, uh, you know, working in unison. You don't want to build separate infrastructures for each piece. Um, and that set of 20 or 30 applications is changing very rapidly as open source ecosystem moves forward, as the application space moves forward. And so when customers think about the change in demands on infrastructure, this is kind of what they're thinking about and, and having to juggle. And, and so that, at the end of the day, drives them to demand much more flexibility uh, in their infrastructure, being able to use it for many different purposes, um, much more agility, being able to uh, adapt very, very quickly, uh, and much more um, variance or dynamic range, right? The ability to support many different needs on the same set of infrastructure. Um, and, and this is where uh, we see very, very strong demand indicators, and, and we're very invested in, in meeting these needs because they fit very well with our core product principles. Great, thank you for that. I, I really like that answer because it's not just a bunch of you know, slideware mumbo jumbo. You actually put some substance on it. Rob, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. And look forward to having you back soon. Now, in a moment, Scott Sinclair, who's a senior analyst at Enterprise Strategy Group, speaks with theCUBE's John Walls to give you the independent analyst's take. You're watching theCUBE, your global leader in high-tech coverage. <laughs>